So the last video, I just bent the four main frame members, uh, square one inch tubing, 65 wall, uh, welded them on the tips, able to put side panel on there. I was even able to put the bubble on there and see that I had enough headroom, not a lot, but I could always raise that if need be. And decided to get on with the show and started with the rear swing arm. Well, I'm about to destroy a perfectly good rear swing arm on this motorcycle. This is off the Yamaha 185. What I'm going to do is swing these out. So while I'm trying to bend this tube, I'll show you the tiller steering I have in mind with the configuration of the steering rods and hopefully the placement of the front shocks. So while I'm trying to get the tube off the radius block, I use a few shots of me putting on some seven inch legs that way I can get the uh, bottom frame off the wooden blocks that I had. It's exciting to finally get going on this. It's at a point where I got to do a lot of thinking. If I don't, like this morning, I realized, oh, how am I going to get the engine out of here? So came down here and spent the last hour just trying to figure out how I'm going to do that. Still deciding on that. These are the things you got to think about before you start cutting and welding pieces. Right now I'm working on the rear swing arm. I got to chop that down again and figure out how to locate it onto this bar here. And here we go. Took off that much length, quite a bit. So luckily, one inch tubing goes into this uh, one and an eighth metric tubing. Perfectly, I believe. Should. Get a few wraps at the hammer, see what happens. While I'm bashing in the tubes, I thought I'd show you the DIY elastomeric uh, motor mounts that I'm making. Seeing this is a one banger, it's going to be vibrating around a lot. This is an idea I got off of YouTube using a 3M product, usually used for installing windshields on cars. I felt it would be wise to manufacture these first before filling them up with uh, the rubber compound. Made a little jig out of plywood, filled a few small holes so I can put the spacers in there and put the housing over that, centered and leveled. And then I filled it up with the uh, windshield adhesive and let that set overnight. A 
again, it took quite a while to get these into tubes, but they finally went in, and I took the ends, popped some holes in it, weld holes, assembled it all, and uh, decided on a new configuration. All right, I think we got it. Now I'm not professing to be an excellent welder. I'm an amateur at best, but these will hold. Okay, after a lot of iterations on this swing arm, I finally decided uh, on design. This would be kind of the old classic mono shock. It'll come like this. So I got two more days to wait for the new shock from Amazon. And but until then, I think I'll go ahead and weld this up and the rear fork supports and the motor mounts. Looking down on it, the wheel looks pretty leveled out. I think we're ready to go. Here I'm just using a three quarter inch boards to simulate the trusses that'll go on here. I gotta get in the stick. <laughs> there we go. Sloppy, I know, but it uh, it does do a good job of simulating the actual truss that'll go in here. I'm trying right now to figure out where to put these cross braces so my knuckles and elbow doesn't bang into them. So this is the truss and in the vehicle it's going to be going right about here. And I'm getting a lot of interference here so I'm going to put a little curve in here to uh, actually go with the shape of the curve of the body and this will A give me more arm room and B Give me a place to attach my side panel. And now these are probably going to be under tension. I think this minor deflection won't um, mess it up that bad. It'll still be able to do its job. I hope. <laughs> I sure did make this a tight cockpit. I don't know why, but. Yeah, it gives me a little room here, I can tell, too. All right, let's tack these guys on. Stay tuned for part three. Come on your way soon. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye.